Welcome to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for The Mortgage Voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome everybody, I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888 713 2929, that's our telephone number over here. Write down the phone number, uh, write down your questions, think of things to say uh, back to me during the show, and then give us a call. Uh, I would love to be able to talk to you off air and answer any of these questions. There are so many in the mortgage industry, so many problems that might come up. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of different kinds today, and one of the reasons that I wanted to and was excited about coming to the show was to talk about the problems and problems that you may encounter when you're trying to get a mortgage as well. Now, I have several deals going, and maybe this is the end of the cycle, or maybe this is the beginning of the cycle in terms of why there are the problems that there are now, and why these borrowers have either waited forever or have finally found the interest rate that is friendly enough so that they can go out and get themselves a loan, a refi, or a purchase. In the purchase market itself, there are a lot of different products out there. And there is an attempt right now at Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to widen the qualified mortgage. Qualified mortgage being those mortgages that are um, purchased by Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae, but they have to adhere to stricter guidelines and parameters when you go and get a loan. So this non-QM, which is really subprime without all the baggage to it, right? Subprime was an excellent market in its day, but at the time there were very little restraints or constraints on appraisals, on uh, income verification, on other parameters within the loan that made the whole process kind of dodgy. Yeah, at this go around, they're calling it non-QM, there is, uh, there are many more uh, safeguards built into the system, but essentially it's it's about the same thing. That's we're trying to get borrowers who don't have standardized documentation to go and get a loan. And there are, well, almost every lender is doing non-qualified mortgage loans. That simply means that Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac will not purchase them. But there is a great appetite in the secondary market for mortgage-backed securities, whether it be with your insurance companies, whether it be with hedge funds out of New York or wherever, large insurance companies have funds. Certainly sovereign funds are available in order to buy these mortgage-backed securities. And consequently enough, there was an article today on Mortgage News Daily, which we go to almost each and every week to find our, our nuggets or our, our things that we want to talk about on the show. Within that, there is a battle of sorts going on between the mortgage-backed securities and the treasury bonds. Now, both of these things are items for sale, and in a fluctuating and nervous market, i.e. the uh, stock market, which has been up really, for really for the last you know, two or three years, really pretty substantially, but there are downs and troughs within that based on whatever happens politically in terms of the trade war going on with China. And I think that's probably the major element to why people would retreat from stocks at a given moment and head into securities such as either the treasury bonds or mortgage-backed securities. I think that that volatility with China is the reason that drives people to those other two securities. But within that, the two securities, the mortgage-backed securities and the treasury bonds, have been, usually there is a, uh, I guess I want to say a yield, which is greater on one than the other. Although on the mortgage-backed securities, if you buy those instruments, you're in for longer periods of time, unless, of course, you can sell off. And what they look for is a yield and a yield spread that can satisfy what they need to have more than what they can get from the treasuries. Now, treasuries, based on what we all know is the benchmark for why we have a mortgage rate for what it is. The mortgage rates today, and let's get into mortgage rates just quickly. Okay, the 30-year fix is 3.75. Now, two weeks ago, it was lower. It was lower by a lot. And the reason that the, the rates are fluctuating now is, again, part of this whole fluctuation within the broader markets and the nervousness of the trade war going on with China. I think that 
is what I've synthesized down. We're also getting into uh, uh, the end of September, and the end of September signals the third quarter coming to an end, so there may be some reservations too about what's happening at the consumer price index, the manufacturing index, certainly the profits or losses by major corporations which will begin reporting season probably within a week to 10 days and um, the fact that we had a Fed lowering of the I guess the um, the rate by 25 basis points I guess the target now is uh, 1.75 to 2 percent in terms of the short-term lending that they do Um, and these the problem right now in the economy, uh, as I see it, and why we talk about it so much on the show, is that we have this uh, pending investigation of the president. Now, whether that affects you all uh, at your daily life, it doesn't affect me at all. But what happens in the markets is that they get nervous when things change. Now, the, the hallmark of this particular political uh, presidency Uh, and I call it a political presidency because most of what happens is political. It's an attack or a defense. But volatility is the watchword for what is happening at the White House 90% of the time. Markets don't like it. Treasuries don't like it. Customers don't like it. And so the economy as a whole, we might see eh, maybe 2% growth this year. Uh, We've seen... Uh, evidence of a shrinking of the overall economy. We've seen some numbers that look as if we are not as robust as obviously we were a year ago when we were dealing with much different dynamics and parameters, the tax cut being the major impetus for why there was more money in the system. But if the Fed is looking at uh, continuing to lower rates and if the president is continually asking for more tariffs in China. How is this going to affect the interest rates based on this difference between the treasury bonds and the mortgage-backed securities? And the market for those is usually a retreat from the stock market, let's face it, or an influx of foreign cash because those particular markets or those particular avenues of investment have really gone sideways or south or, you know, anybody who's investing in a worldwide way is looking at where they're going to make the most money and how secure is the money. If there is volatility, and there's always volatility, whether it's in Pakistan and India, whether it's in the Middle East, between Saudi Arabia and Iran, or whether it's in China, uh, between China and the United States in terms of that trade war, that volatility is really inherent in the system. So wherever that's happening, money usually seeks the safest and best returns, and that's usually the United States, and usually in the treasuries uh, or locally in the uh, mortgage-backed securities. So we're going to watch those numbers to see what happens, especially when we're talking about the interest rates and what happens with those interest rates based on all of this going on now and with this impeachment inquiry going on. Let me ask you a question, Daryl, if I might. Sure. Uh, you, you follow it, I'm sure. The impeachment inquiry. Uh, do you hear much talk about it with your friends, family, neighbors, anybody? Not so much. Not- you know, I mean, uh, we... That's why we say friends and family because right. we don't talk about that kind of thing too much. Right, that's know. what Facebook is all about. You yeah, go yeah. rant there and then you go home and have dinner and not talk about it. Plus, you know, the impeachment itself doesn't mean he would leave the office. No, it doesn't mean anything. What it so means is that there's, you know, a lot of... liability of some type. Yeah. yeah, they, you know, like they did with Clinton, we all realize that impeachment means nothing unless you can get the votes in the Senate. I mean, Clinton was impeached, but he did leave office. And, right. And Dick Nixon quit before he got a chance to be impeached. Right? That's right. And that's our history with it. So I just think that uh, given the fact that um, the country has their attention moved all over the place by whatever political events are happening in the moment, used to be during the you know, 10, 11 years ago, it was the, it was the financial crisis that would move the, the attention of people. Well, I mean, daily, I say to somebody, you're not going to believe this. But... <laughs> no, I, I 100% agree with that. I just think that... Uh, when we talk about you know the investment angles i think a lot of people get lost in a lot of this stuff as opposed to looking keeping your eye on the ball we're going to talk 
in my final segment more about the rates and why the rates may be where they are for a while, which is low. And actually, they're at a, you know, since 2011, it's been the lowest it's been. So the rates are absolutely great. And if you're out there looking for a home, we want to talk a little about home prices. I have some great guests coming on uh, the show today to talk about all of that. Um, I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's our telephone number. Pick up the phone. Call and ask us any question you want about mortgages and real estate, and we will try to help you. If I can't help you, we're going to find people who can. There's so many things, so many variables. I know that when you talk to seasoned veterans in any business, they seem jaded and like they've seen it all. Well, I've been in the business 30 plus years. I haven't seen it all. I haven't even begun to see it all. Why? Because every market has different opportunities and challenges. There may be some similarities in the loan to value, maybe similarities in the the needs, and everybody knows that prices and costs go up. But in terms of figuring it out, and enjoying the process. Yeah, that's why real estate is fun. That's why a lot of people get into it. Anyway, as I said, I'm Jeff Barton, and thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like to email us, info at malibufunding.net. And if you want to see my Twitter, it's at Jeff6493. I don't tweet a lot, but when I do, boy, the earth shakes. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway, our first guest today on the show, laughing in the background, is uh, Josh Thompson, who is a uh, real estate investor. He's also um, done many a loan for many a clients, and he comes to us today to share with us what's happening in his, in his particular world. Josh, how are you? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. I can hear in your voice that you've been busy. Why do I say that? Because, uh, you know, when I called, you were on the line, you've always got a phone ringing in the background. Tell us about your business and what's happening today. Oh, man, lots of, lots of stuff going on, lots of refinances uh, yep. on the loan side. Right. Uh, rates, as, as people may know, are extremely low at this time and uh, continue to, I mean, go down it looks like the fed has dropped the fed rates about a week and a half ago or a week ago so right um great great time to refi um yeah i was just on a call too for the inglewood development that i'm doing so just handling some some stuff with that and yeah very very busy well explain a little bit about the development because i know there are people who listen to the show who are not just buyers and sellers there are people who want to invest in real estate or figure out a way by which they can do something cheaper like build something and then sell it rather than have to pay somebody to do that tell us a little bit about your involvement in your project in inglewood too oh yeah yeah um well yeah i'm a i'm an investor so you know i do uh you know, flips on the smaller side with single families and, you know, up to four units. And then this project is kind of one of the bigger ones I've, I've ever worked on. It's a 20 uh, single family resident subdivision development in Inglewood. Uh, and we're actually doing them as small lot houses. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, pretty much the process. We're almost at the, we're at the tail end of the entitlement process. Um, and we have the tenants uh, moving out of the because because currently now the, the structures that my team and I own are uh, three single family residences, two duplexes, and a four unit all on one block. Uh-huh. In so uh, the tenants are moving out. So we're looking to start construction very soon uh, and just tying in the construction financing. But yeah, to the heck of a way to increase the value of a, of a property to, to develop it. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different ways to go in your shoes, right? You could build the thing out. You could sell the uh, fully entitled property. Um, what What is your plan, and uh, what's your exit strategy on this thing? Oh, yeah. So, our, uh, I mean, my plan is to go uh, all the way and, and do the development uh, ourselves. Okay. And, uh, and and the exit strategy is to sell each home uh, individually, but I have penciled it out as, uh, you know, just in case anything happens with the market and we're unable to go with exit strategy one, um, you know, I have different different lenders that, that we use that will refinance the entire property with one blanket uh, mortgage and look at it as a, as a rental. So, so that's, that's kind of the, the way that we, we're hedging against any, you know, recession or anything like that because people still need to uh, rent homes. But, but I mean, I, 
think we'll be able to, to sell them. There's the inventory is so low in LA, so right. Uh, any new, new construction home, I think people will be all over it. Yeah, and uh, th- did you get much backlash in the neighborhood because you're kicking out the tenants uh, at, at such a? Uh, I don't know what the rents were, but I can't imagine if they've been in there a while. And it, and I didn't even know if, is Inglewood a um, rent controlled city. Oh, yeah. Well, so Inglewood actually did uh, just implement an emergency kind of rent control ordinance right. that, that actually has passed into permanent rent control. But um, it's, a, it's a lot less lax than the, uh, to the uh, Los Angeles, the city of L.A. and, and other places, rent control. Um, it's only It only applies to properties that have five units or more. I see. Which is, still, which is considered commercial. And everything that we have is one to four. Um but, but, yeah, we haven't gotten much backlash. Uh, a lot of the, the tenants there, you know, we, we're, we're very, very uh, considerate of, of the, the, you know, what's going on, and we don't want to be known for displacing anyone. Right. So there's several of them that we're actually helping to find another place and helping some of them with, uh, you know, relocation costs and moving costs and things like that. No, I think that's exactly what you have to do if you are in the development business, which you guys are. Uh, I have done some development i know what it's like i know the difficulties especially when you're in neighborhoods that just don't want to see change for whatever reason even if it's not the greatest neighborhood and you're building the best homes and houses they still don't want to see it and that's difficult both on you know uh, wanting to do it i mean you're you you have to want to do this kind of work because it's not simple how long's the entitlement period taking you oh man it's been it's been four years four (laughs) years right uh, it's actually it's actually a little more than four now, so you know it's uh, you got to be able to, to roll with the punches. And you know, if you're going into, in my advice, anyone going into a development project like this that that's not over the counter permits that you're acquiring, right. I would I would say make sure you pencil in it taking two to three times as long as you uh, <laughs> anticipate. Two to three times, yeah, that's about right, and twenty to thirty percent more cost. Exactly. If it's still profitable after that, then you know you have a deal. (laughs) I want to hit a little bit on what's happening in the market, in the real estate market. You said that uh, you didn't think that there'd be an issue selling these properties. In the current market, I'd agree with you. But if in two years down the line there's a bump in the road, um, what do you see happening uh, now, in the future, after the election, that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, man, there's so many variables that yep. are in in the air that makes it so hard to be able to tell uh, what's going to happen. I mean, the whole thing with China, the trade yep. war. I don't know, you know, where that's going to settle, where that's going to land. Now, this new thing where we're seeing, uh, you know, President Trump possibly, you know, some impeachment talk and, and things like that. So, I think I wouldn't really be able to to say what's going to happen on that until I see who the you know next president is and you right. Know, well, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I agree with that entire assessment. I mean, I, I spoke about it um, many times off air and um, trying to decide or figure out. I mean, everybody wants steady. It, it doesn't matter if it's steady bad or steady good. They just want steady. Why? Because mm-hmm. you can predict where things are going to land if you know that it's not going to change all that much. But in this particular situation, you just don't know. I do agree that housing in the Los Angeles County market, especially in Inglewood, is scarce. So I, I don't think you'll have a problem down there. Yeah, and, I, and a lot of economists agree with that. And I think even housing on the western west side of the U.S. in general Mm-hmm. There's a lot more activity that makes the like the housing market a little bit more attractive than in other areas in the U.S. I think like there's a lot of tech startups and and big tech companies that are moving into areas that are that are also increasing values and things like that. So I think I think we're we're okay in that regard. But still, like like we're saying, we have no idea what the uh, you know ramifications of some of these other things that are going on in the, in, in other areas of the economy. What that's gonna to us overall so right we will see yeah we will see um okay you've touched on everything except i've got i got about a minute left i wanted to see if you had any ideas about the job market because uh andrew yang who has come out and said look we're going to lose 55 million jobs in the next 10 years to automation and ai um you know what's your thought on that too I mean, I, I, 
I do. I, I've been looking into some things like that, and I've uh, I actually saw some videos recently just about a bunch of different automated uh, machines and, and watching, you know, an automated bartender machine, and right. all, you know, and all all that stuff. But I still think that with all this automation, it, it creates new jobs of you know people that have to service the the automated uh, things. But I, do, I, I mean, I do think it will have an impact on the job market. But I do think that automation is is something that can help you know humans leverage you know their their time and and be more successful entre- in an entrepreneurial aspect. So uh, I think that we'll just kind of have to shift what we uh you know our kind of idea with things so yeah i don't i don't think that there will be as many entry level you know jobs that people can get into to kind of support their their selves and their family but i do think if you use the ai from an entrepreneurial standpoint then you can be right overly successful in, in that in that regard hey could you quickly shout out your phone number so that people if they want to learn a little bit about development uh or need somebody to help them develop uh they can get a hold of you right away Oh, yeah, no problem. It's uh, 323-945-5694. Excellent. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for coming on the show. All right. Thank you for having me, Jeff. No, thank, thank you, you very much. And I'm Jeff Barton, your um, voice in the mortgage industry, and we'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929, our telephone number here at the studio. If you want to write down that number, give us a call. We can help you answer any question you're going to have about either the segment, the show, or any question in general about real estate and mortgages. Uh, We've had a couple of great guests and uh, we'll continue to do so over the upcoming months. Uh, Volatility in the market, volatility in the political landscape, as well as the trade war going on in China are at the top of what's happening in the mortgage market in terms of uh, whether people want to buy mortgage-backed securities, buy treasuries, or anything else that uh, constitutes how your rate is going to be affected. The rate is affected by selling 10-year treasury notes, and uh, rates have been actually pretty good. We went through a a 30-year fixed rate earlier in the show, and let's just get to the rest of it. The uh, FHA, VA, uh, 30-year fixed rate loans, 3.375 is the uh, bottom number. That that sounds pretty good. There's a 15-year fixed at 3.375. And again, if you're out there and you're you're wanting the lowest rate because you need that lowest payment, uh, and I absolutely understand that, Understand that with your FHA product comes not only with that rate, but that you also have your insurance that you got to pay pay for, which is about uh, I think it's 0.85 a year. Uh, and if you have a hundred thousand dollar loan, that's you know another 850 bucks a year. But if you have a five hundred thousand dollar loan, well now that's times five, so it's about forty five hundred dollars extra a year, and you got to divide that by twelve to add into your monthly payment, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Uh, the five one arms are currently at 3.25 percent i told a story earlier in the show about the arm product i love the arm product and the reason i like the arm product is because if you know that you are let's say you're uh, one of these businesses or one of these uh, people that moves a lot and the reason you move a lot is because your job demands you move a lot Uh, whether you're in sales or whether you're a corporate executive or uh, i know there are certain people in some industries i would let's say it's a restaurant business where you move into a city and area and you open up their business and you stay with that particular restaurant for you know a year two years five years Uh, obviously if you're going to have a a loan that's 30 years, you're going to be paying more than you really don't need. So the 3-1 arm, and in the, uh, 5-1 arm, in this particular case, 3.25%, you're comparing it to the 30, 30-year fixed rate at 3.75. Well, even in today's market, that's a half a point difference, and that's a big number, right? I mean, $500 is a half a point on a $100,000 loan. So if you have a $500,000 loan, why would you pay the extra $2,500, $3,000 a year when you really don't have to, especially when you know you're going to get out of that house and move? Uh, there are many reasons why people do move, many reasons why people want to move. Uh, and as I said, that's just one that I brought up as an example. So the rates, yes, they're smoking. Yes, if you have product right now that you're looking 
to buy or you're looking to sell and and uh, step up into a bigger home or sell and step down into a smaller home there are there is some product available san bernardino and riverside counties hi everybody out there you know what's happening in the real estate market there are some areas which are um still ripe for opportunity there are still areas that are ripe for flipping house flipping um if you need that particular expertise i would call a local expert in real estate in your area certainly we here at malibu funding malibu funding sponsors the show we can help you point you in the right direction or provide you with those particular people we like to work with a lot of different real estate agents we don't want their business we just want to do the loans on uh you know most of these transactions so a lot of times we will have uh, a request for a loan in an area and we will call a local agent to be able to say hey can you help this person and they do and they're grateful and that's how you build relationships with people and um so if you're out there and you're listening to the show and you need a real estate agent uh you can always call us we can refer you to somebody we know a lot of people we've been around many many years the company was opened in 2002 so Uh, that tells you right there 18 19 years later we have uh, experience uh, and we have a lot of different contacts Uh, one thing about the real estate and the mortgage business is it's not as big as you think that uh, if you're around any length of time you get to know people in your market in your area pretty well I will say that after the 2008 mortgage meltdown uh, both real estate and mortgage business contracted and we lost a lot of very experienced good people but that's what happens when the market collapsed uh many many of the lenders that were around i think there were only over 350 that closed at that time and there's a a thing called the implodometer if you know what that is and have been there before you know exactly what i'm talking about you can go there even today i think it's called the yeah the implodometer.com or something like that you can google it they will show you what lenders are you know um closing or have closed in the last you know month two months year two years so that you can see there's always changes in our business but the people stay the same and they just move from company to company and uh, I think that's a good thing because it allows us to be able to leverage our relationships to be able to get you what you need which is a better loan more service faster turn times those are all really important when you're out there in the mortgage place or when you're out there in the real estate world trying to compete and if the price is good and if the property is a value you will be uh competing in terms of what other buyers are going to be competing to you against whether it's price whether it's term whether it's no contingency offers or whether you know you need a particular product i need an fha product because i don't have a down payment so if we can come to them and say look we need an fha product i know we're competing against 30-year fixed products which is you know some some say is is a, a safer bet because there's more down payment needed for a conventional loan than there is an fha loan but if you have the ability to be able to say hey we can close that loan for you in 21 days or whatever the time frame may be that we might win you your particular uh, negotiation when you're looking to buy a house that's important so leveraging your not only your uh, your friends and the people you know in the business but your experience and having been around a while can give you a leg up especially in the situation that i just described so that's that's where the rates are and that's where they've been uh, i did run across an article by jan swanson again we always thank jan for writing terrific articles mortgage uh, news daily which we go to a lot and you can go there yourself if you want to see exactly what i'm talking about they talked about uh, pending home sales and the raise uh, the rising of prices uh, pending home sales are uh, it's about flat from what it was about a year ago and we do have some price ac- appreciation about two and a half percent year over year and that's nationally uh, each area of course has their own particular uh, ups and downs in the marketplace but nationally that's what it is it's an important to understand that prices are still going up which means equity in your home if you bought it a year ago two years ago five years that's still going up as well these are all good things especially in a marketplace where uh, you may want to refinance and the more you have in the more down payment you have the lower your rate i'm jeff barton your voice in the mortgage industry and we'll be right back you're listening to the mortgage voice with jeff barton We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, 
email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry, 888-713-2929. That's our telephone number over here. Write that number down because you're going to hear things on this particular interview and most of the things we say on the show. You're going to have questions. You're going to want to know why. You're going to know want to know if your situation matches what we're talking about, and if not, can it be tweaked so that therefore you can get a loan too. Real estate and mortgage, that's what the show is. That's what we bring to you each and every week. And if you're a constant listener or somebody that listens once in a while, uh, thank you for that. Uh, You come in a good time. It's fall time here in Southern California. And with that comes a number of different changes. Uh, We've had uh, lowering of the Fed interest rates, which uh, doesn't necessarily affect the mortgage interest rate. But in this particular case, we've had uh, both rates be as low as they've been in for a long time. But before I get into that, let's bring on an expert who really can talk to the specifics and how that affects what she's doing in the business. This is a a new guest on the show, and I want to thank Nancy. This is Nancy Laura from Fairway Independent Mortgage, and they're a direct lender. And Nancy, thanks for coming on the show. Sure, absolutely. Thank you for having me on your show, Jeff. No, thanks a lot. Um, Talking about interest rates, uh, what do you think is the next step for these interest rates? Up, down, sideways, and how are you guys handling it in your product placement there at Fairway? Well, I believe that, uh, you know, the rates are going to probably stay within a certain limit where they're still going to be... Uh, the lowest rates that we have seen in in a long time. Yep. Um, even if they go, let's say, for example, up by a quarter of a point, uh, it's, still, it's still a very good time to refinance and purchase for the most part uh, because, you know, I believe that they are, the rates are going to maintain form as where they are until the end of the year. So if someone is trying to purchase at this time, this is a very good time to do it. If the rates go up, um, it limits uh, or it, you know, it, it makes uh, the prospective buyers to qualify for a uh, lesser amount right. uh, for their purchase price. And so it is important for them to understand that, you know, rates can change depending on cer- several circumstances, of course, that, you know, we're going through. But definitely as far as... Uh, you know, home buying, this is a very good time to do it. And do you do you follow the real estate market? Obviously, you're in the lending business, so you have to follow it per se. But um, the real estate market itself, we have a, a, I guess we need a, a big need for housing in Southern California, which has kept the property prices okay. right, raising. Um, where do you see that particular market going? Well, you know, um, what I think is, yes, I've, it becomes a little more challenging, of course, you know, when borrowers want to buy and the housing pricing is not, uh, you know, going down. Right. If anything, it has either stabilized, you know, or it's going up a little bit. Not as much as before, of course. Yeah, I agree as with that. Doing as before. Yeah. But definitely, it has increased a little bit. And what I say to that is, uh, inform yourself. If I was... You know, every time I speak with my uh, prospective buyers, I said, you know, you, you need to make informed decisions uh, to know exactly what uh, what you need to do or what type of program you need according to, you know, your certain um, needs in life. And so, for example, we do work with de- different programs, of course, with personal home buyer programs with... Uh, buyers that are trying to move from, you know, a property into maybe a bigger or smaller property according to their needs. Um, But also, you know, we offer down payment assistance programs for buyers that are trying to get into their first property. And as you know, you know, it's very difficult for for buyers sometimes to save the money for the down payment and the closing costs. But there are there are programs that will help them with that, so at least they can get into their first home. That's that's a that's a very good step to to do, you know. And well, what kind there, of loans are those? Are those like Cal Half loans? Those are the Cal Half loans. Okay. 
um, that, as you may know, you know, they're, they're statewide. So that's the right. beauty of this program. I really like it because you can combine, for example, one program that will pay for, that will cover the down payment, the minimum down, down payment required, and another program uh, will cover, if not all, most of the closing costs where, you know, borrowers come with very little money and sometimes, you know, almost nothing at all. Right, exactly. It's a really good right. program. There are certain require, requirements, of course, uh, but it, it is one of the best options at this point in time. You know, if they don't have the down payment uh, or they have, but they don't have enough to cover person costs and down payment. You know, I, I like the Cal Hafa program. Tell me a little bit about uh, Fairway and where you do a lot of your business. I know you're probably able to do it all over California, but uh, um, this show, as you well know, is uh, broadcast out in San Bernardino and Riverside counties, a little bit of L.A., a little bit of Orange, uh, and certainly up in the Tahoe area. Uh, where, where is your where is Fairway do a lot of their business that you are that you're currently working for? Yes, well, Fairway is uh, licensed to uh, to do business in every state. Right. Um, you know, in all 50 states. So we have offices in, in every state all over the place here in California. Um, for example, I'm out of the Newport Beach uh, branch. However, I, I can do loans in all California. You know, Southern California, Northern, Northern California. And so... Um, we the beauty of Fairway I really like Fairway because we do what's called uh, table funding. Oh yeah, meaning that our uh, you know our signing and also our closing are very fast. Many times we can have the borrower sign uh, today and funding the next day in the morning. So that makes it that, that's fast. really good, especially with real estate real estate agents and sellers wanting things to happen as quickly as possible. I suppose using Fairway would be an advantage if they're in competition with another buyer because you can close so quickly. That is correct, yes. Um, you'll be amazed at, you know, how quickly we can close many times. Of course, you know, it's a team effort where everyone needs to do their part. But if, you know, the buyer is very proactive and, you know, the agent also is very proactive. You know, we can close very, very quickly. We, many times, we can save loans that other lenders can't close. Oh, that's excellent. And do you, do you specialize in a particular area, like a non-QM? Is it QM? Is it FHA? Or do you do the full gamut of loans? I do a wide range of, of programs. But I want to say that, for example, I can do non-QM, you know, like, for example, a uh, bank payment sure. program. Um, but also I do the down payment assistance program. Right. Um, I do FHA conventional and jumbo, you know, high, what is high balance, it's called high balance. Yes, and so right. I, I can do uh, a wide range of, of programs. What do you bring to your clients that maybe some other loan officers don't? You know, it's just the service. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. the buyers or the borrowers want you to communicate with them. It's possible to give them options, you know, put these options on the table for them so they can make the best decisions according to their needs. I think that's one of uh, the best things that I can say I can bring to the table. Besides the knowledge, of course, that I have in a really... Uh, a very good team of people that are behind me. Very I'm important. Not talking about only you know the process of the underwriters closer. Of course. Uh, really, we we have a very good um, you know support group that can make us move quickly. Well, that's important, so, and I think speed in any transaction always helps the borrower, whether it's a purchase or a refi. Correct. That is correct. Yes. Absolutely, and so I want to say that you know, among other things, the the service, you know, trying to always be responding, uh, you know, to respond to to borrowers and even realtors to you know, to a, in a quick way where they are all informed along the way. 
um, because of course nobody wants to be in the dark when when it comes to their transaction beyond about you know absolutely if there's anything to overcome you know they they understand for the most part they understand that you know they're doing the biggest investment and therefore you know there's uh, many times you know um, documentation to be presented and and so you know they appreciate the communication and the honesty. Nancy, could you shout out your phone number? This is uh, Nancy Laura from Fairway uh, Independent Mortgage. Could you shout out your phone number for those people listening in their car who want a terrific loan officer to call? Thank you. Sure, absolutely. My number is 626-498-5373. Thank you very much for coming on the show. We'll do it again. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, Jack. And thank you thank very, you very much. much for having me in your show. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much. It's uh, Nancy Laura from Fairway. I'm Jeff Barton, your host and uh, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. The telephone number over here is 888-713-2929. Save that number. You're going to have questions or you're going to have comments or you're going to need some information. So write it down and call me. I can definitely help you. Or if, like a client of mine, a guy that I worked with seven years ago, and this bespeaks of both longevity in the business and also loyalty by someone you did right by so i had a client call me he is a um a gentleman who was divorced but had kids so he and his ex both needed homes his ex stayed in the home that they had uh raised their children up to a certain point and the husband wanted to go get another house so that's what we did we found him a house we did the uh the contract negotiations he ended up closing on the deal and he was very happy and in all of these instances anytime you represent a buyer in any situation the consideration of both the family and the situation is primary in what we think about Uh, the reason is is because we're solving a problem this gentleman needed a home so that he could have a home for his children when he had split custody with his wife so found him a home and it was a unique home in that it had kind of a a backyard up a hill and up the, on the top of the hill was a, a little treehouse kind of place but it was fully functional and permanent and so his kids were looking at that as a place uh, to, of uh, respite to get away from everything and have a little clubhouse anyway it worked out the guy was very happy so he called me yesterday and he said look I have a I have a problem I said okay what's the problem and um, I, I have to be honest, at first I, I didn't know who he was because this is six, seven years ago. And um, I keep in touch, but I, apparently I just didn't keep in touch that well because I didn't recognize the the voice on the phone. And when he said, hi, my name is blank. And I said, oh, yeah. I, so in many of those conversations, you kind of just go along until all of a sudden, oh, yeah, yeah, it dawns on you who the person is. So, yeah, it dawned on me who it was. And I went, oh, yeah, it's great. Great to talk to you. We'll call him Pete for lack of a better name. So Pete was telling me that uh, how how did I fare in the fire that happened last uh, year, about a year ago now. I said we were fine. A lot of our neighbors burned down, and we got to talking about the fire. And he said, you know, my house there uh, in Malibu, it burned down too. I went, oh, my gosh, I had no idea, Pete. I'm very, very sorry, you know, and we went through the whole uh, explanation of the the tragedy as well as the, you know, all the trauma that takes place when you go through something like that. And anybody in San Bernardino and Riverside knows about fires, earthquakes, floods, sandstorms, droughts, anything of a natural disaster we talk about a lot on the show, which can affect both the price and cost of a house and also your ability to go get a loan. I mean, ask these people down in the um, hurricane zone, in the hurricane flight path of any of these hurricanes that have hit in the last, you know, two or three months, and they'll tell you, most lending has been suspended unless you get an inspection by the lender, and that's, you know, on top of your appraisal fees and every other fee you got to now send somebody from the lender out to make sure that the house is still standing so pete called me we talked about everything as i said about the fire and what was going on he said 
I need to uh, get a loan. I said, what do you mean you need to get a loan? I, he said, well, when we originally bought the house that I lived in before I moved out and purchased the house over in Westlake, we had a 5-1 arm on the product. Uh, on the property. 5-1 arms is an adjustable rate mortgage. And the rate on the house has just adjusted to another $1,000 that I owe a month for that mortgage. So he bought a house, was paying, let's say he was paying $3,000 a month. The house burned down, but that doesn't burn down your mortgage. You still got to pay your mortgage. So if it's an earthquake or a fire or a flood, your house gets damaged, you still owe the bill the mortgage. So he said, I, I want to lower my payment. Can I do that? So here's a guy who's paying a mortgage of, let's say it's $3,000 a month that just got adjusted to $4,000 a month because of the 5-1 arm, and there is no house. It, got, it was burned down in the fire. So I said, you know, Pete, that one's a good one. I, I don't know, but maybe there is. And the caveat is, he has the insurance money to rebuild. And it's in an escrow account at Wells Fargo Bank. So, what do we do with a situation like that? I, I really don't know. And that one's a difficult one. But I have someone who works for Malibu Funding. Malibu Funding is the company that sponsors the show each and every week. Thank you, Malibu Funding. And hello, San Bernardino and Riverside, KCAA, KMET, and K Tahoe. All the listeners in those particular areas that hear the show each and every week, or some new people that come to the show, this is a show for you about real estate and mortgages and what we try to do is provide information some storytelling and uh, guests that come on the show and talk about their particular expertise um, which we've had on the show as you all know you've heard and it was a pretty good show of guests today but so what we did what I did is I went to one of the guys that worked for Malibu funding and I asked Luke to play who Luke's been on the show to please see what he could do for Pete so he came back to me this morning with a couple of scenarios problem is is that the adjustable rate mortgage that he had uh, the five one uh, the five year fixed rate was about 2.75 percent now that's a smoking rate the rate adjusted to four and a half percent and unfortunately because of the nature of the property and yeah there's there's equity in the land so that the LTV was okay and the fact that he had money aside for the rebuild was I guess uh, comforting but the rate was going to be more than four and a half percent. Still working on it, but there are you know solutions. And unfortunately for my client Pete, when he's trying to get a loan on a house that doesn't exist because of the adjustable, well, we have solutions, but not the ideal solution. He's better off probably staying with a loan he has, even though he's got to pay another thousand dollars a month. These are the type of solutions that we work hard to to get. And actually, as as we were talking about it, it's, it's interesting, right? Because you have the fire. You've got to continue to pay that mortgage. You have equity in the land. Of course, it's in Malibu, California. Of course, you have equity in the land. I think the lot's worth a million and a half, and he owes like a, a, uh, 900000 something like that. So he's got a lot of equity, equity in the property. The question about how to utilize that equity uh, in a rebuild really what you want to do is get a mortgage like a refinance even though there isn't a house there very interesting so if you have these types of scenarios this is what the non-QM world is all about that non-QM world that'll take your bank statements rather than your W-2 that'll look at you even though you're not a citizen and say okay how do you make your money how often do you deposit money into your bank accounts and you know what is the likelihood that this is going to continue these are the questions we're asking if you're let's say not a u.s citizen i had another client come to me two days ago with that exact scenario i've been in the country for a long time i pay taxes i have a, a job and uh i'm not a citizen but I, I do, as I said, I have residency status in the U.S. Can I get a loan? I said, yeah, you can get a loan. Their companies will do that. And we found them a nice company. There, there are several, actually, and we had uh, a guest on the show today who talked about it, a little bit non-QM, uh, at Greenbox, Greenbox Loans. 
So there are solutions for a lot of different problems, and companies like mine survive. Oh, you know what I saw today? Uh, I was reading an article. It said that 20% of the loans done in the U.S. are done in California. Wow. And we're talking five and a half million loans a year. And that could be because in other parts of the country, people can afford to just buy a house and they don't need to borrow. Or there just aren't as many people. I mean, we, we forget California has probably 10% of the population, too. That's, that's part of it. Yeah, and, right. And the cost, I think, might be an issue as well. And did you see, uh, I don't know if you watched the news at all, San Francisco and the homeless situation up there is out of control. It certainly seems that way. It's it's just, and because whatever the nature of how they're trying to solve the problem, it's just not working. So people are turning away in droves from going there as tourists. It's really hurting San Francisco's business. Yeah, and San Francisco, they um, live on live on uh, um, tourism. You know, tourism, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I've been there many times, but not yeah. not lately. It's, I would want to live there. Not not right now. <laughs> no, exactly. Anyway, thanks, Harold. Uh, I'm Jeff Barton. I'm your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks for listening to the show this week, and we'll see you next time. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. For more on today's topic, visit www.malibufunding.net.